Sandy here to speak to you about our Advent Evenings of Reflection. We are in for a real treat this week, third week of Advent. We are so happy to have our own Father Paul Holmes back to give us his reflection on the wondrous light of Mary, the Mother of God. And the voice of Mary, the Mother of Jesus and our Mother, who said yes. No one better to do that for us than Father Paul. In fact, as we all know, Mary and her son are what Advent is all about. And so he does a marvelous job with it, as he always does. So you can imagine the fun. There's been a reality show on NBC for practically 20 years. And for almost all of those years, I hadn't watched it even once. The reflection and the song that we're in for this Monday night. And so I invite you to join us on HTTV, the cable channel for Verizon and Comcast, 7.30 Monday night. Also, if you'd like to access number one and number two, you can do that on the parish YouTube channel or the parish website. We would invite you to take some time for yourself. It's very quieting and it's very prayerful and it's really what we need during this time of COVID. That's why I can wish you all a happy Advent. The Lord will come to save all nations. Let us raise our minds and hearts to praise God this morning, singing the Advent Gathering Song. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, who enlightens every heart, be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, rejoice always in the Lord. Again I say rejoice. The Lord is near. These words set the tone for our liturgies and celebration, recognizing that the Lord Jesus is present in our midst. We begin this Mass with joyful hearts. Rejoicing in the abundant mercy of God, we acknowledge our sins and seek the path to peace.
Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite our children now to please come. Children, go and listen to God's word. Listen to God's word with joy, that the life of Jesus might always make us happy and that we find our happiness in following the words of Jesus. Now go in peace. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily to the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from evil every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. According to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? he admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, Who, what are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees also were sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice, rejoice, the Lord is near. Enable us to attain the joys of so great a salvation. May he make you firm in faith and joyful in hope. All words and prayers from our liturgy today. Our liturgy today reminds us to look ahead for the advent of Christ is near. Today we think about rejoicing because the coming of the Lord opens our eyes to the life 
he calls us to live. We have in Advent much to rejoice in, for the Lord is near. But as we wait for the Lord, some of our joy might get lost in the fog, the fog of this world, the fog of uncertainty. We might get lost because we are burdened with the challenges of the pandemic. We're overwhelmed with the growth in our responsibilities each day. We're worried about the economy and our own finances. We're uncertain about our culture and our children and our future. Our final blessing today is meant to be taken seriously. We will hear, as you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith. We know that we carry so much in this life that in order to rejoice, we have to be convinced of the Lord's coming. This life can readily rock our foundations and have us surrounded by the fog of uncertainty. But Jesus is near, and so today we rejoice. We know that he is coming. We know that the Lord is near. John Henry Newman was canonized a saint about a year ago. John Henry Newman's life spanned pretty much the 19th century. He was an Anglican priest, a noted author and scholar, and eventually he joined the Catholic Church. His sermons and writings continue to influence many people today. One of his famous prayers recognizes the mission and the purpose of each one's life. When we think about our reasons for rejoicing, we need to know clearly our purpose, our mission in this world, and John Henry Newman's words can help us to focus on how to live them. God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. Therefore, I will trust him. Whatever, wherever I am, I can never be thrown away. If I am in sickness, my sickness may serve him. In perplexity, my perplexity may serve him. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow may serve him. My sickness or perplexity or sorrow may be necessary causes of some great end. He does nothing in vain. He may prolong my life, he may shorten it. He knows what he is about. He may take away my friends. He may throw me among strangers. He may make me feel desolate, make my spirit sink, hide the future from me. Still, he knows what he is about. Being used as God's instrument, discovering and holding to the Lord's purpose within us, John Henry Newman lived his mission. He found a reason to rejoice in the midst of some difficult days for himself. Sickness, perplexity, and sorrow. John Henry Newman went through all that, and through it all, Newman knew he could never be thrown away. There was a purpose to all this. God draws close to us in his purposes, and we look to him to guide and strengthen us through the fog of this world's uncertainty. It is that purpose which ultimately brings us joy. When John Henry Newman converted to become a Catholic, he lost his job at Oxford. His family left him. His friends deserted him. It was at that time that he penned the lines, he may take away my friends, he may throw me among strangers, he may make me feel desolate, make my spirit sink, hide the future from me. John Henry Newman went through months and months of very dark days. His journey was often clouded and uncertain. His faith in Christ and his love for Christ's church, which cost him so much, never allowed him to lose the joy of his faith. On this day, we are reminded to be joyful with the advent of Christ. Christ is coming. Christ is near. Christ comes to give us certainty amidst the fog of uncertainty. May his coming lift the fog from us. May his coming be our light and may his coming be our mission.
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we present our needs to the Father and ask God's promised salvation in our prayers. Our response is, come, Lord Jesus. For leaders of Christian churches and communities, may their preaching of the gospel bring many to seek the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Come, come Lord Jesus. For a flowering of justice, that leaders of governments be open to the Lord's courage and lead along the ways of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. For those in our community who find the coming holiday season a time of anxiety, and for those who are separated from loved ones during these holidays, that the Lord's peace will stand guard over their lives. We pray to the Lord, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, for all our deceased, that the Lord's salvation will fill them with everlasting joy, especially for our recently deceased, Frank Stimler. We pray to the Lord, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, for all those we have promised to pray for and for all the intentions we hold in our hearts, for all our newly elected officials, and for all who participated in the election process, for peace of mind and heart, for an end to the pandemic, that therapeutics and vaccines be made available to all peoples and nations, and for all the intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord God, hear our humble prayers. Form us into a humble people, that at the advent of your Son, we may recognize him in our midst and find joy in his saving presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are presented and prepared, we sing the advent of our God. Be at hand. 
Pray now that this, our sacrifice, might become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with the angels and saints, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that these may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Saints, Rose of Lima, and all those who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other now some sign of Christ's peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb.
Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down now for the blessing. Rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, may you be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing and the peace of God be always in your hearts, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and rejoicing. Thanks be to God. We go forth singing, proclaim the joyful message. <laughs>